Most graciously and Heavenly Father, we come to you right now just to say thank you. We thank you, Father, for protecting us and watching over us all week and all night. Now, Father, I ask you to bless everybody right now up underneath the sound of my voice. Because there's someone out there do not know you. Father, I ask that you prick their heart this morning. Let them come down that aisle and say, what must I do to be saved? Please, sir. Because, Father, you said in your word, the only way to the Father is through you. And we want to thank you. Now, Father, I ask that you bless, keep edge of protection around our pastor. One pastor, Titus A. White. Father, he's human. And we know the enemy in any kind of way will come at him. Protect him. Father, give him a word. Give him a word so he can give it to us. So we can be better going out as we was coming in. And we want to say thank you for that. Father, keep your edge of protection around Sister White. The kids. Because they are human too. And the devil is mad because got you on their side. Now, Father, I want to thank you once again for protecting me. Because without you... Couldn't have woke up this morning. It wasn't an alarm clock. It was you that gave one touch. And I just want to say thank you. But Father, I want to be so ever so careful to give you the praise, the glory, and all the honor. It's in your darling son Jesus I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. thereof, and all that dwell therein is the Lord's. Come on, I want you to worship God in spirit and in truth this morning. Let's show him that we love him and that we have our best interest in knowing the God that we serve. He's our Lord, our God, and our Savior. Let's worship him in spirit and in truth. Come on. Move by your spirit, Lord. Have your way in this place.
up this morning, yes. a beautiful day. Yeah. I'm thankful to be here. Yes. It's devotion time. So I'll be reading from Joshua 1, um, the new IV version, verses 7 through 9. And while you look for that, I'll be reading the mission statement. It states, to foster a congregation and community of disciples that genuinely display the grace and glory of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Scripture reads, be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Amen. 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 Good morning, Grace. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes to go to the throne of glory today. Lord, thank you, God, for waking us up this morning, Jesus, and starting us on our way, God. Lord, just thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your reassurance, God. Thank you for your redeeming. Just thank you, God. We are just in awe every day waking up, God, that we get the chance to just be Christ-like, God, to be like you. Lord, to spread your word, God, to be able to just send a prayer up, God, daily, Lord, for ourselves and others, God. Lord, I come today, God, praying for the world, God, that you continue to be a healer, God, a world shaker, Jesus, Lord, a protector, God. For there is just darkness running rampant, God, in our streets, in our homes, in our schools, Have mercy, God, on it, God. We pray for just a rebuking of that, God. The darkness that's trying to come over, God. Lord, we just thank you, God, for today, Jesus. 
Lord, that you continue to have your hands on the church, God, the vision of the church, God, the building of the church, Jesus. Lord, the finances of the church, God, the ministries, Jesus, Lord. Lord, I come praying, God, for the pastors, God. Lord, that you've given us, God, to just share your word, God. Thank you for the vision, Jesus, Lord. I come praying for our pastor of the house, Jesus, Lord. The shepherd that you've given us to lead us to the word, Jesus, God. Lord, continue to guide him as he prepares to prepare the message and the word for the saving of the people, Jesus, Lord. We thank you for the salvation of this house. Lord, continue to cover his family, God. Cover him on his job, Jesus. Cover his mind, Jesus, in preparation, Jesus. Lord, I come praying, Lord, that you continue to have your hands, God, on the elderly, Jesus, Lord. Lord, that they continue to just be a light, God. For the younger people, God, continue to be a blueprint, Jesus, of how to follow you, how to walk with you, Jesus, how to talk with you, Jesus, God. Lord, when we are weary, Jesus, Lord, we thank you for their guidance, Jesus. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for the word, God, for the people online, God, the people who are far and near. Lord, I pray for people who are coming and on their way, Jesus. Pray for pr transportation, God, protection on the street, Jesus. Have mercy, God, that, Lord, I come praying that the word restores us, Jesus. That it gives us just a renewing of our mind, God, Lord. As Valencia said, God, that we be strong and courageous in you, God. That we fear nothing, Jesus, Lord. That the devil has nothing that we need to fear, God. That we just need to come to you, God, and not be anxious for anything in your word, Jesus. Lord, let's not be anxious in waiting, God. Lord, I come praying, God, for healing in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, I come praying for healing in our bodies, Jesus. In our minds, Jesus. In our marriages, Jesus, Lord, have mercy, God. In our relationships, have mercy, Jesus, Lord. Give us the patience. God. Give us the strength to wait for you, God. In the singles, Jesus, Lord, I pray, God, for the marriages, God, for Lord, the Lord, the devil doesn't want it, Jesus. He doesn't want the people to be equally yoked in your name, God. He doesn't want the families to be strengthened, God, in your name, God, that we are building kingdom families over here at Grace, God. Lord, that we are just being just like you. Lord, we pray, God, that you continue to just have your hands on us, Jesus. Lord, all we need is one touch from you, Jesus. We come asking God for forgiveness for anything we said, done, did, or thought that hasn't been quite pleasing in your name. Who quite pleasing in your name, Jesus, on the days we don't deserve it? On the days that we gossip, God. On the days that we just curse, God. On the days that we are just envious, Jesus. On the days that we are portraying in slander and hip being hypocrites, Jesus. Lord, I pray against that spirit, God. Lord, I pray that you remind us that we are the church, Jesus. Outside of this building, Jesus. Lord, I pray for the evangelist that's going forth, God. I pray for the, the, the special gifts, God, that you are giving us, God. That we don't forget, God, that you gave it to us, God. Lord, that we are truly a body and a temple of the Christ, Jesus. Have mercy, God, on your name. Have mercy, Jesus, Lord. I pray for the grieving, God. I pray for financial breakthroughs, Jesus, in this building, Jesus, Lord. I pray for shackles being broken off the minds, Jesus, off the bodies of the people. Ooh, Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy, God. I pray that, Lord, we, we turn this church upside down in the name of Jesus today. Your, your name, amen.
Good morning. morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, give the God a hand cup of praise. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise today. Uh, Y'all looking shocked this morning. I came up here because um, we need to get more active in the spirit of God. Uh, We're living in the last days. Uh, The world is at the last end. And we meet, meet, make sure that when we come to church, it's all about Jesus. It's all about the praise and the thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. As we conclude with our, finish our devotion, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let's stand to our feet and praise him. Let's worship God. Let's magnify the name of our God. For our God is worthy to be praised. Come on, y'all. He's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, God is worthy, worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. That's more like it. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our God. Amen. That's more like it. Amen. We don't serve a dead God. And we don't have a dead church. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise and be to our God in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you're here for the very first time, any first time guests, if you're here for the first time, we want to recognize you on this morning. Any first time guests. Amen. Nobody here for the first time? All family here? Amen. Well, praise God today. Amen. Amen. There are a number of people out this morning that are sick and under the weather. We want to keep those uh, members in your prayers. Uh, This is that season. Everything is just going around. Amen. And so we want to pray that we stay healthy and stay well for those who are under the weather. Uh, We're praying for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, the choir, you will come and bless us in song. And I'll be back with the word of the Lord. Amen. On today. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, you ought to show it. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God.
Amen. What a beautiful song. Empty me, Lord, and fill me with you. Amen. Not with all the stuff out here, but Lord, fill me with you. Empty me, Lord. How many just want God to empty your mind, and your heart, your spirit? Lord, empty me. And I desire, amen, to be with you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You can bring the kids in the back. Amen. Amen. I desire, amen, to be with you. Empty me, Lord. Amen. And we give God all the glory, um, the praise, and the honor. In the name of Jesus, he is worthy, amen, to be praised in Jesus. Come on, give God praise today. We thank God. We bless him. And we magnify the Lord for the Lord God, amen, is worthy to be praised. How many just glad to be in the house of God just one more day? Amen. Lord have mercy what a great song what a beautiful worship song lord just empty me and fill me with your spirit fill me lord till my cup runs over with your goodness and your mercy god is an awesome and a wonderful god and he's worthy to be praised yes yes thank you lord i want more i want more of you jesus I want more. I want more of you, Jesus. That's what I'm going to sing on my way to work tomorrow. I want more, Jesus. <laughs> Before I punch in, I want more of you, Jesus. I want more. I, come on, y'all sing that. I want more of you, Jesus. Come on, give God praise today. Hallelujah. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice, amen, and be glad in it. In the name of Jesus, what a great day it is. What a great day to be alive. Uh, what a great day to be in the house of God. Amen. Just one more day, and today we give him all the glory, the honor, and the praise in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much, Olivia and Valencia and our devotion. Amen. Thank you, choir. Amen. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, Sister White. And thank you, Church of God, uh, who made it today to come on and give the Lord the praise and glory and honor which is due him in the name of Jesus. As we stand all over the building today, I want to call your attention to the book of Ephesians. Paul letter to the church at Ephesus, Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Amen. And while you're turning that for those on YouTube and Facebook, good morning to you also. Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse number 1. I want to uh, pray for Pastor Mark who was on his way to church and got sick. Amen. So we're praying for him that uh, God will touch his body and he will be uh, well in the name of Jesus. So many called this morning, just got the flu bug, this uh, stuff just going all around. Amen. And so we're praying for the saints in the name of Jesus. But I'm glad that you guys made it on today. Ephesians chapter 4, we want to begin at verse number 1. Amen. Let's do our church affirmation as we make ready for the word of God. Good to see you, Sister Ingrid. Amen. Let's go. This is the day that the Lord has made as we gather at grace to worship God in spirit and truth. Your word has commanded us to grow in grace and knowledge that we may go and compel all men to Christ. The word of God gives power to the preaching, help to the hurting, and faith to the fainting, that you may be glorified. 
the devil horrified and the saints satisfied. In Jesus' name, amen. Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse number 1. Now, uh, in our Sunday school and on last Sunday, uh, we have been dealing with church. Amen. And I want to continue to deal with uh, church life, dealing with the church. Amen. And so for the next several weeks, uh, as the Lord uh, put it on my heart, as we're doing in Sunday school, we will be hammering down about church. Amen. Jesus said upon this rock, I'm, I'm going to build my pastor. That ain't what he said? Upon this rock, I'm going to build my members. No, that ain't right. Upon this rock, I'm going to build my Amen. So we want to talk about what y'all don't like to come to church. Ephesians 1, 4, beginning at verse 1. When you got it, say amen. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called with all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and the Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what it is, but that he also descended first un into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended in the same also had ascended up far above all heavens that he might feel all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists, and some pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Verse number 16. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied according to the effectual working and the measure of every part make it increase the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Amen. I won't talk from this store today. I'm all in. I'm all in. Let's touch the person next to you and tell them these words, all for one and one for all. I'm all in. I'm persuaded. I'm, I'm all in. I'm not going to play church. Either I'm going to be church or I'm going to not be church, but I'm all in. The church has many facets. God's word and worship. You can go to nine different churches and get nine different ways on how they worship and experience the word of God. There was a very popular movie years ago, many of you older people might know it, called The Three Musketeers. And the three musketeers, their motto was, 
all for one and one for all. And what they were conveying in their motto is that we fight together. We stand together. And one fall, we all fall together. When one fight, we all fight together. In other words, I'm all in. No matter how big the fight is, you can count me in because you can count on me. No matter how small, large, the obstacle may be, I got your back. I'm all in. It was three of them. They were all in the fight together. Now one for all and all for one. Paul the Apostle adapts this motto in Ephesians. And Paul reminds us that we are the body of Christ. We are the church. And as he writes to the church at Ephesus, the Ephesians, Paul reminds them that we are all for one. And one for all. That church life cannot be light without the body. Because the body collectively is what God designed. When God made us, he made us to fit the body. That the body is no good without the parts that's connected to the body. And if we're going to be all for one and one for all, and I'm in it to win it, I've got to realize I matter to the body. That you are important to me, and I am important to you. That's why when you miss We miss you. Y'all quiet, y'all got it right there. I'm, I'm coming. This stay in the parking lot. I'll be in your minute. You are a part of me, and I am a part of you. And when you are not in your position to function in the body, we miss something important. Everybody is connected to the body. And your part matters in the body. And once you realize how valuable you are to the body, you'll be more serious about the body. I, 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 I dare you to lose a part of the body you can't see. I guarantee you it's going to affect the whole body. I don't know what my spleen is, but I know I need it. I don't see it, amen. I, I, I don't really pay that much attention to my toes, but, but, I, but I need every part of the body to function like God called it to function. And it matters to God that you know who you are and what you are in the body of Christ. And so often, Pastor Bowden, we walk around meandrously and we walk around haphazardly if though we don't have purpose in the body. And brothers and sisters, everybody has a purpose in the body of Christ. So much so that God told Paul to write about it. And Paul writes to the church at Ephesus morning to remind them the importance of church life. Church is not bricks and mortar. Church is a living organism that has structure and function that when you don't come here, I guarantee you, not even over there. Because we sometimes equate church with this building at 2538 Brightside. But God is more impressed that you take your church to Walmart. 
You, you take your church to your dormitory. You take your church to the football game and you take your church on your job. That, that's, that's real church. See, in here, we all come to learn about God, but out there, we got to show what we learn each and every day. Y'all ain't saying nothing, but let me go ahead. And I'm trying to get out here early today, but y'all ain't clapping. You are the church. Everywhere you go, you are being read as the living Bible. And if you don't know the Bible, how can they read you? For the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I thank God for the body, but I thank God for the teachers and the preachers. I thank God for those who lay labor to give you the word. Because how can I grow my faith without the word of God? Church is the body. You are the church. Pastor Bolden said in Sunday school, our God just don't want to know you. He won't know any of you. I want to know the real you. I want to know the church. And Paul says there's some things I want to bring out about the church that is very important that we all must relate to. And here it is. Number one, the source of church unity. Paul says the source of church unity is this, that he says that you are the body of Christ and you are unity, but the unity comes from this source. That with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another ever in doing to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace notice the source of church unity that we are one the synopsis of these verses that the believers be united in Christ and too often we are separated by minor differences in our belief now, I don't care how you worship God because all of us may worship a different way, but the end result, we worship the same God. Because the Bible says, watch this, y'all. There is one body. Did y'all see that in your Bible? One spirit. That word spirit is capitalized. That means it's the Holy Spirit. One God, one spirit, one Lord, one father of all. Paul says, out of all things, we are one. Paul helps us to understand the beauty of the unity is the source of where the unity come from. And that is we ought to look like God everywhere we go. He says the source of the unity is that we all have different ways. We come here with different backgrounds and different cultures and different economic backgrounds and different lifestyles. But at the end of the day, we ought to have two things in common. These two things ought to be evident. And the two things are, one, we share a common ground and a common grace. All believers should make effort to understand that love and patience, that they all belong one to another. He says, with lowliness and meekness, and long suffering. Ever endeavoring to do the keep the peace and the unity of God, Paul does not pretend that unity is easy. He says, I command you to do it. Because when you have God, you can do unity together. It's hard to get along without God. And so God says, I'm going to give you my spirit. And that spirit is the Holy Spirit. And when all of us have the right spirit, we can get along. And the problem is we allow our affections and we allow our feelings and everything else separate us from the spirit of God. How can we have all these churches and be so divided if we got the same God? But I won't tell you the reason why is when we come in, we minimize our God and we maximize our feelings. 
I don't like the way she look. I don't like the way she sing. I can't stand when he preach. I ain't going there no more. See, you let your feelings get away. But if you got God's spirit, I got God's spirit. When you in the church, you see nobody but Jesus. Some of y'all looking at me funny because you ain't seen Jesus yet. But I won't tell you, it ain't about the master. It's about the, it's about the, pa- it's about the master, not the pastor. It ain't about your feelings, about your faith. It's about your walk with God. He said, walk worthy in your vocation. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, see, I, I tell you, I see, I, I know what y'all, okay, see, I know what your problem is. I know what your problem is. You want entertainment. That's what you want. Yeah, yeah, you want pastor to entertain you. But the word says you ought to have unity in the spirit of God. Now, notice what it says. There is one body. All of us together makes one body. There is one spirit. Even as you are called of one hope of your calling. Got one body, one spirit, one hope in your calling. What's the source of this? All that means, brothers and sisters, we are one. I said, if Mays and Frankie Baptist said we are one, but, but, but we are one, Paul says. We are one body together. And when we are body together, we should demonstrate these attributes. He says you should have the seven attributes with God. One body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. That we all in this together and we all for one and one for all. That means when you see me out of church, I still should be in church with you. Y'all miss your shout right there. Amen. Amen. So when you see that that, that's there sometimes, you ever see people who, who... Speak to you sometime. Then at a time they don't say nothing to you. You you ever met some people like that? You ever met some church folk like that? Love you one minute and can't stand you the next minute? You ever met some? But Paul said that shouldn't be if you're one body. If you're one Lord, one baptism. Amen. What you see about me should not change your feelings about me because you got one Lord. The problem is, see, you, you, you maximize my mistakes, but don't minimize, minimize my grace. See, when you see God in me, amen, you ought, to, you ought to give God the glory that even when I fall, we are still one body. Even when I make mistakes, we are still one body in Christ. Paul refers them to this one body, the source of of unity is that we ought to be humbled, we ought to be meek, we ought to forbear one another. He says that's the source of unity. How many humble folks this morning? I ain't tell none of y'all to raise your hand. Y'all raising your hand. You, you know, humility, he listen, tell you what humility, humility is when you make yourself small. Before a big God. Humility is, I can get it, but it can't get me. I'm not defined by my job or my house. When I had a hoopty, I picked up everybody. I got this Mercedes, you better not even get near my car. You tell me if you got to stay humble. Don't let the car make you, you make the car. Amen. Don't, don't let the clothes make you. You make the clothes. Amen. I don't need Jordans to make me special. I'm special. I, look, I, I wear stuff from Walmart and still I'll dress half of y'all in here. Come on, talk to me if you can. Amen. Beauty ain't on what you put on. Beauty is on the inside. Clothes and cars and money should not define who you are. Come on, talk to me if you can. You married greatness when you saw me. Even though I didn't have a dime in my pocket, I know who I am in Christ. Why? I'm humble. I know where my blessings come from. Some of y'all sitting here act like you made your own blessings. But go ahead on with your blessings. But I know my blessings come from God. 
Everything I have, everything I need comes from the Lord. I'm blessed by God, not by my job. Amen. I told y'all years ago, I got fired just as many times I got a job. But I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, his seed begging bread. When they fired me, they, they, they listen. I was more happy when I got fired. I said, man, praise God. I got a couple of days off before my next paycheck come. Come on, talk to me if you can. Why? I know God is my source of my supply. He shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. Hold your head up and know where your blessings come from. The source of church unity, you got to be humble. You got to be Meek. That word meek is an interesting word because Ambrose and Sister Barb, what meekness is, is inner strength control. Turning the other cheek don't mean you scary. Saying less words don't mean you can't stand up there and hold your battle. You just understand less is more. And because Moses was the meekest man on earth, the Bible said, Moses had inner strength. The power is not that you can do it, but can you control it? Anybody can cuss. Anybody can lose their temper. Anybody can get out of control. But the power is when you can control them. I know I can handle you, but I reserve my rights. Because I know God saved. Vengeance is mine, save the Lord. Some of y'all just need some self-control. You need to be meek in a hostile situation. Boy, I'm saying somebody ought to see the way you're looking at Ray this morning. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I've got to be meek. That is power under control. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. I can call 10,000 angels and wipe all of y'all out, but I'm meek about it. I got power under control. Is there anybody that thank God that you got power, but I control it with my meekness? And just because I let you get away with it, don't think I couldn't handle you. But I know if I let loose on you, you couldn't handle me. So I reserve to be meek. Boy, I feel like preaching right there. Marcus, I, I, I reserve to keep quiet because I can't be noisy at times. Some of y'all know, as black folk, we know how to bring it. Oh, y'all ought to hear what I'm saying. Hey, man, I, I know some of y'all are real quiet. Your nature is quiet. But at the wrong time, in the wrong place, if you happen to say the wrong thing, you might get a quiet person to make a whole lot of noise. But thank God for meekness. I wish I had some Bible readers up in here. Amen. Y'all ain't, never, y'all ain't never been drunk before? Men tipsy? Let me tell you what wine do. I've seen quiet people get loud when they're intoxicated. Some of the quietest people I know. You, you get that liquor getting them? They get real loud. And I've seen some people who always loud get real quiet. Because wine sometimes make you do what you normally don't do. Amen. Be meek. Be humble. So you got to learn how to be patient one with another. I'm almost finished, y'all. Be patient. Because patience gives you the virtue to have long suffering. I just got to be patient. And we need a whole lot of patience. I can preach that a whole year. We need a whole lot of patience. I can see some of y'all now. You're weary and tired already. Baby, just, you just need some more patience. Some of y'all just need some sleep. But you need patience. Lord, give me patience. To deal with this thorn in my side. Can I talk to you? Be careful what you pray for. Because the only way God going to give you patience for Stina is put you in a place where there's no patience. Don't ask God for patience. He'll put you in a traffic jam and you got to go somewhere. 
That's the way God worked because I can't really test your patience until I put you in the test. And thank God that God put me in the test and I passed the test. God will give you patience. My married folk in the house. God will give you some patience. Lord Jesus. Y'all ain't never had patience in your marriage? I'm talking to the wrong church up in there. But you got to pray for patience. But thank God for patience. With my single folk, you need to need patience to hold on. Lord, I've been holding on. Some patience. Everybody shout patience. You're going to need patience with God. Because God don't work by Timex or Rolex. He works in seasons. So you got to be patient with God. He does all things well. Wait upon the Lord. I say wait upon him. For they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They should mount up with wings as eagles. They should run and not be weary. They should walk. You got to have patience with God. You got to have patience with others. You got to have patience with others. You got to have patience with other people's kids, with other people's families. You got to have patience in relationships because you don't own folk. And people ain't where you are. You got to have patience with them. You can't meet folk and just expect them to be super Holy Spirit because you took you nine years to get there. It may take them a little longer, but you got to be patient. I know you feel what the Holy Ghost, you speak in nine tongues, but baby, be patient with other folk. Folk ain't like you yet. You got to learn how to be patient. Amen. Be patient with me. God is still working on me. And guess what? He's working on you too. Because you haven't arrived yet. I know you think you're all that, but you ain't there yet. Everybody shout patience. Lord, be patient with me. God is still working a work on my life. Be patient with God. Be patient with others. But be patient with yourself. Quit being so hard on you. Because you is just a work in progress. I know you failed. But you can't succeed without failing. Show me success without failure. I show you clouds without rain. Everybody going to fall sometimes. We all fail. But the question is how you get up and learn from it. You got to learn how to be patient with yourself. And one way to do it, stop holding on to your past. The reason why it's called the past, it passed you up. You passed it up. Stop holding on to things you can't go back and get. Let it go. Oh, that's a rhyme right there. Let it go in 24. Some things you just got to let go. Be patient with God. Be patient with others. Lord, help me to be patient with me. Because I'm the worst. I can't blame none of y'all. I'm just trying to work on Titus. Every time I look in the mirror, I say, Lord, there he go again. I can't get rid of me for nothing, y'all. Every time I turn around, me there. <laughs> Amen. Me always, and me is the problem. Touch yourself, say, you the, you the problem. I got to deal with you. See, some of y'all don't want to look at yourself because you know you the problem. <laughs> me is the problem. Lord, help me to deal with me. Source of church unity. Gotta be humble. Gotta be meek. Patient. Say so you gotta forbear one another. That word forbearing is really the long suffering of others. When I forbear things, I really accept people as they are and wait on them. Lord, am I saying something this morning? Lord, have mercy. See, see, we got to forbear this new generation. So, Randall, they ain't like us. But I understand because I got to forbear them. I've got to have long suffering with them like God had with you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
Y'all had short dresses in the 70s and 60s? Now all of a sudden you act like you ain't never had that before. Child, them things they wear in the day. We had some stuff back in the day too. But let me move on. My wife, give me them eyes. Are oh, you hearing what I'm saying? All I'm saying, forbear each other in love. Because all of us had a time span when things looked bad. Because when y'all were young, the old folks said, hmm. Now we all, we saying, huh. But all of us got to forbear one another in love. Are oh, you hearing what I'm saying? They talk different. They dress different. They're more social than they are spiritual. So we got to make the connection. And how you do that? Forbear them. Talk to them. Understand their history. You don't know why she's like that. Or why he feels he is this way. But we are so judgmental without forbearing. The minute they walk in, we turning up. Y'all do the juice number. Juice got so many looks, I don't know what he be doing. Are you hearing what I'm, what I'm saying? Amen. Let somebody walk in this church with a backpack. That boy give you nine different looks. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? You got the. <laughs> you got the. Everybody said forbear one another. I ain't trying to make this out of a comedy show, but it is comedy up in here at times. Forbear one another in love. I got 15 minutes. I'm finished. Here it is. Pick up next week. The source of unity. And then secondly, the secret of church unity. He said a heart preparation for love. Now Paul examines our attitudes through humility, through gentleness and patience, forbearing, all this. We must exercise the right walk. Amen. You got to walk this thing out, Paul says. Amen. He said because... There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, above all, through all, and in you all, right? But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Everybody has a gift that God has given to each of us that we may demonstrate the gift of in us. And this is the problem in the church body. We are malnutritioned because only few gifts are operating. <clears throat> Amen. We are lacking our vitamins. We are lacking the B vitamins, the belief the body, amen, the brevity of who we are in the body. And if you don't demonstrate the gift of God, it affects the whole body. Let me tell you, verse 7, Ephesians 4 and 7, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Everybody got a gift. Now, everybody can't play the drums, but you got something you can play in church. Everybody not called to preach, but everybody's called to do something in church. And when your gift is not ministered to the body, it causes a malfunction in the body. The body is not as strong as it could be because the gift is a muscle. And when the muscle is not operated, it loses strength. So that's why you see some folk in the gym, they got muscles at the top, but, both, but skin at the bottom. Because he do more work on the top than the bottom. And a lot of our church look the same way. We got, we got muscles up top, but we skinny at the bottom. Because we don't work the whole body. Because everybody in the body ain't operating their gift. Amen. Let me move on. Because it's getting tight up in here. When you use your gift in the body, the body is strong. It's vibrant. Amen. Then God can put our body on display for the world. 
when a, when a, when a bodybuilders work out, they train for years. And it's not just the weightlifting that builds the muscles. It's the diet. Putting the right food in the body. The right proteins that builds muscles. Amen. And so if you're trying to build the body, you got to give them the right food. A lot of us in the churches today not eating the proper food to build the muscle. See, we just want to build the top part of the muscle because that's what everybody see. And so we walk around top heavy. Prosperity, wealth, you going to make it, you getting bigger, you getting better, you getting blessed. All that's the good things, but that's all we talk about. I'm top heavy. But we don't talk about unity, loving one another, stop sinning, stop cussing. See how quiet it got? Well, we like to talk about Monday coming. Yeah, see, 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 you got to balance the body so the whole body can look like it needs to look when you go on stage to get judged. Amen. So when a bodybuilder is on stage, the judges are looking at everything to synchronize the muscles to make sure everything is in place because they're judging with an eye to see what has not been worked out. So God is saying, I, I can't put my church before the world because you ain't working out all the muscles in the body. Because I got some folk come to church and use the give. They got some folk I still got to find. You ain't working out the muscle. I'm, let me finish. Finish. I ain't got the hollering scream to get y'all attention. Y'all know this is a good word. The source of unity and the secret of unity. His fat, my gift is used for the body, for the glory of God. And if you don't use your gift for the body, God gets no glory. And if God can't get the glory, how can God put his church on display? Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I praise God today. God can use us. For the glory of the body. So here's my finish point. The secret of unity is that when the gift can come together and make one harmony. Work each part in unison together. Amen. Amen. It's like when the voices of grace sing. They sing together, but they got different parts. Altos, sopranos. Amen. Baritones. You, you got to have the right voices together, but then you got to know your part. And it's bad. It's bad when you got to sing a song, but I ain't got no altos. I want to sing this song, but my sopranos ain't here. And so I got to change songs because the gift ain't here to minister to the body. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So God said, I can't put you on the big stage because right now the gift ain't here. And I need the every gift to make the body perform like it should. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And when you get it in your spirit, when you get it in your mind that I value to the body, you'll be, you won't be so lackadaisical. You start taking God serious. Start taking your ministry serious. Start taking the body serious. Because the body is a serious matter. Because the body is the church. Upon this rock, I shall build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 
They need to see us operating in the body. We can't make a difference out there if we're not in here using the gift for the glory of God. Amen. It's tight, but it's right. Paul says the unity of the body that we work together for the glory of God. What's church to you? Don't just come here to exercise tradition. Just come, just to come. Come because you mean something to the body. You want to give God all the glory, the praise, and the honor. God bless me with a gift. And I'm going to use it for the glory of God. I preached in front of 5,000. I preached in front of five. And you couldn't tell the difference. Because I preach for the glory of God. If you never say amen, you get the glory. If you never clap your hands, you get the glory. Because the gift God belongs to you. For every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. And I thank God for the gift. I thank God for the body. And if we are the body of Christ, can we just give God glory? Can we thank God for the body? Can you thank God for your gift? Because you mean something to the body of Christ. As we stand all over the building today, as we stand today, as we stand today, there may be one today, there may be one today, if you're not in the body, maybe because you're not in Jesus. And Jesus wants to save you today can't be a part of the body without salvation if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ why don't you make it official today if you call upon the name of Jesus you shall be saved is there one today you never given your life to Jesus Christ you can come my brother my sister just as you are hallelujah amen you can come Give him your life today. Hallelujah. Maybe, Pastor, you're saying, I'm, I'm already saved. You can join as a watch care member. You can join, amen, as an e-member on YouTube or Facebook. You can walk down the aisles, however the Lord leads you. If you are saved, you need to be connected to the body of Christ. That you can be in the body for the glory of God. You can come just as you are. Is there one today? Amen. Is there one today? For salvation, for church membership, for watch care, for an e-member, you can come just as you are. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Is there one today for salvation? Make sure that you know that you know that you know. Amen. God bless you today. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. You may be seated. Amen. In the presence of our God, he's worthy. Amen. To be praised. Amen. Well, it's offering time. We pray that offering will be a part of, of your worship to God and you can give on your way out to one of our ushers standing in the back. Uh, give your best gift unto God. Amen. Whatever the Lord has put in your heart. Amen. That you want to give to God. But when you're giving, make sure you don't do two, these two things. Don't give out of necessity and don't give with a mean spirit. For God say, I love a what cheerful giver. Amen. And so on your way out, may you bless God as God has been blessing you in your life. And honor God and praise God for the gift. Amen. That God has been giving to you. For giving is a part of our worship. And how many know you can't beat God's giving? Come on, give God praise. How many know you can't beat God's giving? No matter how hard, amen, you try. God has been good to us. And God has been keeping us. So we want to make our best gift unto God. Uh, you can use the envelopes behind the seat. 
You can go online to our website, amen, uh, our mobile giving through the Tidely app right on your cell phones. You can use the QR code right behind the seat for those who are technically savvy. Uh, you want to just do it instantly, you can use the QR code or you can mail it to 2538 Brightside Lane, 70820. However, and whatever you give to God, give it to the glory and to the honor of God in the name of Jesus. And we thank you so much for your giving. Lord, bless our givers. Bless those who God who are giving from the abundance of their heart. And bless those who have a desire to give but not able. God, I pray for them, God. I pray for everyone, God, in the name of Jesus. And we give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. Amen. He's worthy to be praised. God bless you. Amen. As we make our way uh, to leave, I told you that every Sunday uh, we will get out here at 12 o'clock. And today you're getting out nine minutes early. Amen. So we thank God today and we give God all the praise. What an awesome service today. Come on, give God praise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, voices of grace. Thank you, musicians. Man, y'all did an awesome job. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God for a wonderful service on today in the name of Jesus. And I continue to pray that wherever we go, Sherry, uh, we let folk know we are the church. Amen. And if you see somebody not in church, invite them to our church. Amen. And we thank God for that in the name of Jesus. Good to see uh, Marcus and his family. God bless you, my brother. Uh, good to see Sister Ingrid. Amen. Good to see y'all in service on today today. God bless you and God keep you. Amen. Uh, our weekly announcements is in the bulletin. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Good to see you, my darling. Uh, it came and visited us before. Amen. Friend of the parish. God bless you, my sister. Amen. Good to see you in the house of God. Let us stand for our benediction. Amen. Amen. I mean, enjoyed the word today. Thank God for the word. Amen. Amen. I want y'all shout, I'm all in. One for all and all for one. We are the church. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Can't get no better than that. Thank God for the word, Pastor White. You want change? You want to be what God called you to be? The word is there. God says, work, walk circumspectly. Walk worthy of the call that you're called to. He's putting it on the line. I... God bless. You're getting it. You're getting it. Let's use it. Holy Spirit is working. May the grace of God, the sweet, Communion of his Holy Spirit. Walk with us. Talk to us. Reveal unto us the glory of our salvation. May the peace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit go with us until we meet again as the church, the call out ones, the ecclesia. The ones who are crises, go, sin no more, return unto me, says the Lord. Amen.